Good evening and welcome. Good day, good morning, good afternoon. Wherever you are from, I hope you are having a wonderful day. And I am testing out a new microphone and um, a new camera and my setup. So hopefully you can hear me okay and we can get started. What I'm going to make today, if you've already read the title of the video, you'll know anyway, is I'd like to make a little cat ornament on a little uh, cushion, or a nice velvet cushion or something. In order to do this, I'm going to need to warm this clay up. For starters, it's well solid, so I might run it through the mangle a few times and get it get some thin sheets. Um, I've got a pasta machine just off to one side, and I can run it through there. And that will condition the clay instead of hurting my hands. And then I can start to plan what it what I want. I want a cushion that looks like it's got an indentation in it and cat to fit into. So it looks like the cat is nice and comfortable and snug. And I want the cat just to be curled up in a ball with its paw over its nose. And I think that would look quite cool. I know it looks quite cool because I made one ages ago but I didn't have a camera then so I figured I'd make it again now and see if you enjoy it as well okay so let's get started so we have rolled our clay polymer clay out with a pasta machine if you don't have a pasta machine I'd definitely highly recommend you get one you get a nice uniform thickness and you can get rid of all the air bubbles by constantly running it through. And that will be perfect for the next stage. The next stage is I'll be using a piece of, uh, I call it aluminium foil, but you may call it aluminium. And I'll be folding this into the basic shape of the cushion. So. I will, that was going to be very noisy, so I'll be back as soon as I've done that. So it's literally just a piece of foil folded up with some extra scrappy bits in the centre. Just to pad out the middle a little bit, but I'm going to have to do that with clay because I just don't have enough. So we'll place that there, I believe. And I want enough to fold over one edge or the other. And yes, the clay folds over the foil and the foil remains inside. And we press that down and we end up with a little pocket. I'm trying to remove air. If I can, remove as much air as possible. I'm going to make sure just use this screwdriver to slice it off where I want it. We'll be using the rest of the clay to try to get the shape how we would like it to be. We would like it to look raised up in the center. So I will add more clay 
the middle. On both top and bottom. Now let's take a brush size, let's go somewhere there. And then cut that in half. Yes, a certain amount of that could have been done with foil, but two reasons. I've run out of foil, and foil is a lot harder to shape than um, the clay itself. So, you squeeze out the air bubbles, it'll, and it's all cooked in one piece, so it'll all cook together, and it'll all form one final piece of plastic once it's made. And we don't want any foil showing, so that's definitely got to be covered along there a bit better. Because uh, I did spot a little bit of foil. Turn it over, put a piece on this side. Will give us our luxurious cushion shape that we're after. But I don't want to um, smooth this out too much and and cook it because then it will remain in that shape. And I would like it to have an indentation in it where the cat's going to lay. So, in order to do that, we have to make the cat. So we can't actually cook this and finalize its shape until we know the exact shape of the cat. Right, we're getting there. I do think I'd like it a bit higher again. That's much nicer. Give us a much more plush surface to work with, make it look more soft and inviting in the end. Why do you like to curl up on it with a good book? Well, these ends are going to get pushed in quite far, so I'm not too bothered. That foil is really determined to show through in these corners. See, sometimes the foil is actually pain in the butt. But you don't always want to make everything out of solid pieces of clay because hmm, clay costs money. Yeah, foil costs money, but a lot less. It also makes the product, the final product, a lot lighter. As the clay warms up, it becomes easier to manipulate, which is also a good thing and a bad thing because if you can't quite get the shape right, the clay becomes so warm that the slightest little touch modifies its shape. So let's steal off a piece of that. Whereas a, a brook outside my window where people walk their dogs. So if you can hear the dogs barking in the background, that's quite common around here. I'm just trying to make sure that is well and truly covered. Nice and smooth, which would take a while. I want the seam to be halfway in the thickness, um, so it's raised up. I want it fairly even for decorating at the end. Dead 
there we go. That's nicer. Get a bit of So that's all I'm going to keep doing for a while is manipulating this with my thumb, getting out all the bumps and wrinkles that I can. And uh, that's the other advantage, I guess, of using the foil is you can kind of make it in one piece rather than like I did lots of thin pieces, which creates a lot of areas for you to have to adjust and smooth out but um, I'm getting there and I think it's looking okay it's got enough of a area for me to be able to push down on it to create a, a little dent for the cat to lay in and I've got to get out all these little areas transitions between the layers I don't want I want it to look like one nice smooth piece I don't want it to look like several bits stuck together so we'll be back when I've done that so we've done quite a bit with this got it fairly smooth and plush and nice I would like to sweep the corners out a little bit and also on the edge I don't want it perfectly so in a straight line I want it to look like it's soft and inviting and I've got most of these little transitions between the layers smoothed over best as I can. So now it's time to, uh, I've squished all the pieces that I cut off into one lump. Anyway, so now it's time to, to make our cat. Um, it's going to be fairly simple I think, it's just going to be a curled up sleeping cat. And the reason for that is it's nice and easy to make. And if you wanted to try to make one yourself, it's a nice easy shape. So we start off with a sort of a, a nice pebble shape like this. Okay. And we're going to flatten it a bit. Because we all know what cats look like on glass top tables if you've have you seen the photos of underneath a table looking up at a cat? They are pretty funny. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to say the cat's back leg is somewhere around there. Like so. I'm going to squish down the rest of it. A little bit lower than that line. Where we've decided is this little ball shaped Maybe this side would be better. Get in there. Smush it down. Compare it to it. Yeah, that's fine. I might make it a little bit wider. Instead of quite so round. Yeah. So, here we go, that's the cat's back, that's his back leg, and it's going to come down here, 
uh, I will switch it down a bit. And just here, we're going to pinch like this. And that will give us our cat's ear. Looks weird now, I know, but it's fine. Don't panic. <laughs> Don't panic. Don't panic. Right, so we are nearly nearly at the point where we can finally see what the cat is actually going to look like. There he goes, it's a sleeping kitty. And I would like I would like to be able to see his little paw there. So I'm gonna carve a bit more of this out. Remove that piece there. But we're still going to use this piece. We're going to stick it back on just there. It's going to look like kitty cat's paw going over his nose. And that will be. The cat's back leg there, curled up. That will be his nose. And you can do the cat with whatever paint style you like. So, I'm also going to use a round end, one of these, just to give me a little indentation in the ear there. You don't want to make the ear too thin because it might end up getting caught on something and snapped off. So that's the cat's face and his paw over his face. You don't really see a great deal of. And if you want to do the cat's tail, then you can, but I don't think I'm going to draw it on. I'm just going to paint it on when it's done. And that is the shape that we need to indent in our cushion to make the cat look like it's we're really having a good sleep now. Which way up do we want this? Yeah, I think that's the best. No, nope, maybe not the thickest. I made this end thicker. So I'm going to push in a circle to make a an area. That should squash through and squash also the foil inside. Unfortunately, it does mean I'm making an equal dent on the back with my fingers, but you've got to have something to push against. So, I want it to look a bit more indented than that. That really look like it's yeah look at that that's getting much better how I envisaged it in my mind's eye there we go kitty can now lay right there and look really snug And it doesn't matter if you press on a board like this because even though you want it to look kind of cushion shaped, you also want it to be able to stand up when it's placed 
down on something. I don't want the corners of the cushion to touch the desk or table. That would make it unbalanced. I do think these edges might need building up a little bit with some extra clay. So they're looking a little bit thin there. I would like that to be built up higher. But when the kitty cat is sat on it, and I'm not going to glue the cat to the thing, I want him to be a free floating cat. <laughs> right. So let me get a little bit more clay and build up this area here that I've squished flat. So, fresh out the oven. Yeah, quite warm. Um, looks delicious. Hum. Take a bite. Looks like some kind of weird sandwich. And the cat It's come out beautiful. Nice and smooth and lovely. So we have made our pieces and I have a paper bowl and some ultramarine blue which is what I'm going to make the cushion. A beautiful lush ultramarine blue and I'll probably just make the cat black and white more generic but obviously if you're making your own you could deliberately paint it the colors of your cat if you wanted to this will take a couple of coats but I'm thinking this lovely colour will help give the illusion of a nice plush soft cushion. And on the second coat I might stipple it on. We'll see how it looks once it's painted. Uh, I shall just do the top and the edges for now. The edges are raised up. I'll let that dry, then I'll flip it over and I'll paint the underneath off camera. And we shall see how it turns out. I never did put any extra clay down that edge because I haven't got enough clay. I thought I had some more, but I don't know where it is if I do. Um, so I'm going to either find it or buy some more but I wanted to get the video finished so I'm just doing with what I've got um, I will leave a link in the description for the uh, polymer clay on Amazon and you can have a look it's not overly expensive and you can make quite a lot out of one packet a little things and it's uh, sandable and paintable. I'm not bothering to sand it. You can sand it but I'm not going to, not for this project. But uh, it's nice. I like working with it. And it is slightly flexible. It doesn't dry rock solid so it is actually um, polymer so it's a plastic. Once it's baked it's kind of got a, if it's not too thick it is actually slightly bendable. And uh, oftentimes when I paint, I'll leave it stuck to the tile. Because when you bake it, it will actually stay on the tile and won't move like the cat at the moment. Nope, the cat's moving. Doesn't always. I think I've picked the cat up. It's quite useful to leave it set on the, on the tile once it's baked so that you can do some initial painting without it moving around. If moving around is too much of a problem you can just use some blue tech to stick it in place. I say blue tech but it might not be blue in your country. In my country blue tech is blue. That's why it's called blue tech. Otherwise 
It might be called white tech or something instead. So that's the cushion done with its initial coat. And uh, we're going to do some embellishments to it and make it really look like a nice cushion at the end. And then we've got to do the cat. What I was thinking of doing with the cat is using this makeup brush, which I have trimmed down. I've um, cut it off a bit shorter than it's supposed to be. I'm using that to stipple with. I think that might work. But first, I want to give it... I've tried doing um, white ink over the top of black before and it's very difficult to cover the black you need a very you need quite a lot of white paint so i'm just gonna paint the whole thing over see what i mean it just doesn't look like it's doing anything so it takes several coats but uh, then i can stipple the black in the areas where i want the uh the black to be which i might have black paws so I'll put a black bit there over his nose and uh, yeah it'll look pretty cool once it's done but just to get the white paint on there first is just smear it on and see what happens I don't think it's gonna take very well but it will settle after a while you can rough up the surface with sandpaper if you wish or we'll use a different type of paint so how the purple acrylic paint sticks very well to it. Oops, don't do that. I want white paint on the purple. But uh, I shall let that dry, do the underneath, um, come back and do the cat with several more coats of white paint. Uh-oh, that was a mistake. I've just dunked that paintbrush into the wrong colour. Straight in the blue. So... I shall finish this and give that a second coat, turn that over, do the bottom of it when that's dry, do the cat with a few more coats of white off camera and we'll be back once that's all done and dried. Right, so this has had a chance to dry now. And it's looking mighty fine. There's some little bits of tidying up to do, but it's looking good. I'm impressed. I'm pleased with that. The cat is now just purely white. Uh, not quite as much white on the bottom. But, uh, yeah. We shall be attempting to uh, decorate these before I decide whether I'm going to gloss. I might gloss varnish the whole thing. Now I've got here a gold pen, gold metallic marker, and I'm just gonna dip on the corners here. Let's zoom in a little so you can see the process. I'm going to go say halfway down and just touch. Halfway there. Halfway there. Halfway there. And give us a nice little effect on the edge there. On that corner, another one there, one around roughly halfway, halfway between those two and those two. We'll just give us a nice little edging 
to a velveteen pillow. In the corner a bit more obvious from both sides and also trying to follow the arc so this one will be slightly higher because I want it to look like there's an edge that's flowing there you go Simple as that, we now have quite an effective thing. Don't know whether to put more dots in. I think I'll just leave it actually. Because if we put too many in, it could look too cluttered. I think it'd look nice, but uh, I think I'll leave it. Now, the cat. Hello, kitty. Let's uh, bring back our bowl of paint we'll move our thing out of the way get ourselves a bit of black paint out of the tube Ugh, lovely we won't be using that much though so you need a nice stiff brush brush for this a nice stiff brush this is actually a makeup brush which i've cut down on or you can find an old makeup brush or steal one off your partner. Cut it down. I'm sure they won't mind much. So, here's Kitty Cat. And I'm going to give Cat a. I think I'll give the cat a black paw coming across his nose. I'm just tapping. And I think I'll do a black ear as well, why not? I'm not getting any more paint, I'm leaving it because it helps to add that furry look. Uh, the kitty cat is sleeping well here. Um, let's give the cat a bit. I'm going to need more paint for this though. There we go, look at that. It's um actually coming out a lot more paint on this brush than I thought there was. So just keep going with it. And hopefully It will look pretty fur-like by the time I'm finished. There you go. And I think I'll do the tail in black, but I will need some more black paint for that. I'll just be right back. And then let's uh, dab in a tail coming around here somewhere. Give it a bit of black fur around its bum. There we go. And a bit of a black area on its tail. There we go. You're looking mighty fine, kitty cat. Uh, that paint's almost dry already. Crikey. I think I'll go around the back of the ear. Do the whole ear and underneath. Okay, that. So if I've just painted your cat on very sorry. If it looks exactly like yours.
like that. I have a wet wipe here. Just to clean off the worst off of the brush. There we go. Bring that back into view. And the cat will sit on there. I think I'm going to give the cat a little bit more black. I'll be right back. I'm going to make this sort of leg part of the cat. Um, try to follow it around in the direction of fur goes. Helps to give that illusion of fur. But just the stippling effect will help. Just dab. Keep dabbing. to give that furry look. It almost looks coloured. Like there's brown in there, but there isn't this black paint. Yeah. I like it. And then when we paint it over, make that look quite glossy like a nice gloss varnish on it and make it look quite plush and beautiful and sumptuous so the cat let me get that in the shot we'll have a nice comfy cushion to lay on I think it's going to look pretty good once it's done. Peel that up. There you go. I shall give that a bit of a time, time to dry and then we shall gloss it. So they are now dry sufficiently and I have some gloss medium here and I'm gonna go ahead and just plop that straight on here and spread it around with a nice clean brush and this will protect it and will make it quite sumptuous looking I'm hoping um, well, I'm hoping. Yeah, it should do. Find out once it's dry. I have got a little tiny USB fan. Makes quite a lot of noise for a little tiny fan. But I just set it on the desk and let it blow them dry. Whatever I've made. Should also do the underneath as well. Once the top has dried, had a chance to dry, I shall do underneath. I'll do that off camera. We don't have to watch that. But uh, yes, we shall just spread this around. I will not use the excess on the cat because it's probably got a slight blue tinge to it from being on that paint. Really not enough to show but uh, it's enough to make the white of the cat's fur have a weird blue tinge. So. So this has had a good chance to dry now, but I've decided I'm going to add some more dots with the gold marker. I want it to be more 
continuous row of dots. So as long as I place one between each, it will now look like that, which I think looks much better. got to be careful putting the dots on because it is quite slippery now but uh, I think it will stick I'll put another couple of coats of varnish over the top I think it will be fine should have done it before I varnished but I've just decided that it just needed more dots Some of the previous dots I did there are quite chunky. There's not much space in between. But I think that looks much better. Let's zoom in for you to see that a bit clearer. There you go. That looks ten times better, I think. So all I've got to do is just gloss over the edges there. I don't have a matte varnish, so I'm thinking of just leaving the kit like that. I'm not sure whether to varnish it. I think it does need varnishing just to protect it. But I prefer to use a matte varnish than a gloss. To keep the cat looking furry rather than shiny. But I might just use what I have, which is the gloss. So I sure. So this is the final product. Uh, the cushion came out nice and shiny. I'm quite pleased with how it looks, sort of velvetish. I think if I'd stippled it, it would have looked more softer. But I'm overall pleased with how it came out. And the cat sleeping happily on top. Yeah, pretty pleased with it overall. There's a good look round. And that was my one day project. I think it was pretty good in the end. Let's see you in the next.